Hi, you guys. How are we doing this afternoon? Well, I'm Marcy Steiner, and uh, I'm from originally Virginia Beach. People ask me, where are you from? Like, my mom? Um, no, <laughs> Virginia Beach, and I currently live in Rockville, Maryland, uh, with my two kids, 15, 17, Josh and Noah, girl Noah, I always have to say that, and a husband, Adam, um, who's absolutely amazing. And... Um, I'm really, really, I'm really just very honored to be here. I'm humbled and excited and freaking nervous, you guys. <laughs> okay. All right. So I just have to say, someone else is going to have to be in charge of what comes out of my mouth today. Okay. <laughs> I'm just showing up here to be of service. Um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my story in a little more detail than I usually get into, and that's why I think I'm nervous. Uh, but I think about all the stories of the people that I've seen come up on stage that have just so inspired me and kept me moving forward, you know, and I think, well, I can't be selfish and just, you know, have my stuff in my head get in the way about not being a good enough story or whatever story I want to tell myself. It's ridiculous. I'm just going to tell you, okay? It's just Marcy Steiner, raw and live here today. <laughs> this is what you're going to get. Um, I'm going to tell you what's worked for me, and I'm going to hopefully give you some power tools to build your business, okay? So we're building, and it helps to have power tools, and I'm not talking about screwdrivers. We're going to, you know, something else. I said I wasn't going to have notes, so I just got little note cards, and they're ridiculous. I mean, they're like, this is, don't do what I'm doing, okay? But, you know, it's working. So I was born to a very philanthropic and successful family. They, and that's where I think I got my values. And I was very, very proud to be a part of that family. I worked in that family's business. That was my first job. And um, my mom was a network marketer. Anybody here have teens, kids? Right now, anyone here a mother? Okay. I was that kid. I was that kid whose mom was a network marketer. And, and starting from a young age, I remember, you know, being in my um, living room, my family room, and having people come over and, and draw circles on whiteboards, you know? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I grew up with, you know? Running to conventions and... My mom and I had a blast building a network marketing business, and we were very successful. Um, it's, it went like this, and then it went like that. It was an interesting journey, but I still left after high school and went off to be doing what everyone else does you know, around me. They were all going to college. That's what I did. And I got a degree in organizational psychology and organizational communications. I left there and went into the corporate world. Spent about a decade and a half in corporate America in the telecommunications industry, launching wireless. And it was exciting. It kind of reminds me of what we're doing here because it was a breakthrough. I got to tell people, like, you can make a phone call from your briefcase. And they'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, we can put a phone in your briefcase and you can, and I'm telling you one day, everybody's going to have one of these things. And people would look at me like going, right. How many people here have a cell phone? Okay, well, it kind of reminds me of where we are now, right, with LifeVantage. One day, everybody's going to take a Nerf 2 activator, okay, because they didn't really have the vision back then, but now it's just crazy if you think about leaving your house without your cell phone, okay? Anyway, so I was in that industry, and I loved, net I loved uh, corporate America. I was a strange person that loved to work, and I worked a lot. I worked like 70 hours a week. I moved to five different um, states in five years, but I honestly wasn't in charge of my life. If they wanted me to step up or step down or run a new division or run a new department, and I wasn't in control of how much money I could really ultimately make, but I was happy because I was developing people. I was like, they called me the love manager. It was awesome, okay? We had so much fun. But again, I wasn't in control of my life. So when I met my husband and I got married, he was 
an amazing provider. My husband, I cannot even begin to tell you, the man that I married was like, I lived a life that most pro tens live. Beyond, I, I didn't even know what I was getting into. I had no idea. And then in 2008, we unexpectedly lost our money. And one day, it was just like gone. Not all of it, but most of it. And you know what? Well, let me just back up a second and tell you before 2008. After, in corporate America, um, I, when I had children is when it really changed because I wanted to be home with my kids. So I did leave. After a decade and a half, I left corporate America to be a full-time mommy. Um, but after two years of being a full-time mommy, I got really jealous of my husband going to work. That's what happened. He'd get to go to work, and I was there changing diapers and, you know, facilitating communication between two-year-old. And, you know, it was just, it was a lot. <laughs> so I said to my husband, I need something else. I need something else. And he said, you know what, honey, I know you love to make a difference. And I did. I wanted to make a difference. And he said, I'll back you financially in anything you want to do. So I kept thinking of all these different options that I could have in my business, you know, to, to, to create a business. But every time I think about what business I wanted to create, I wasn't really saying yes to the commitments. I wasn't saying yes to carrying a huge overhead. I didn't want to be tied to a location. Like every time I thought about having a specific location, I was like, don't want to really be stuck in there all the time, even if it's what I want to do. I don't want to do it every single day, you know? I didn't want to be responsible for other people's livelihood. I just wanted to focus on myself, you know, and, and, and still make a difference. So I headed back into network marketing. And... I was very fortunate. I worked with products that I loved. I worked with a community that was very, this was 13 years ago. Very, very beautiful community, but you guys, that system there, it was not easily duplicatable. People think, oh, network marketing, one of those things. I know about those things, okay? They're not created equal. Network marketing companies are not the same. They're not all the same. And, um, I mean, this one is just like, it was very expensive. I had to put a lot of money into buying tools. I had to spend so much time learning about all the different products. And the truth be told, it's like, I was successful, but a lot of people in my organization were not because most people couldn't say yes to doing what I was doing. And when I would work with people, they joined the business, we'd start to talk about our goals and my stomach would go into knots because I think you better lower your expectations because I don't know if you can really make that kind of money. I don't know if you can really be that successful. And so in 2008, when we lost that money, even though I was very, very heavily committed to that company, leading the weekly training calls, on the field advisory board, loving the mission, all of that, I thought, the money is not here for me to do what I need to do. Before, my goal was I'm going to build this network marketing business because I'm going to have my dream come true. My dream was I'm going to give over a million dollars a year away to causes that I believe in. That was always my dream, my big time dream, like juicy, that's what I wanted. But after 2008, it all switched. It's like, oh my gosh, how am I going to keep my kids in private school? How are, how are they going to go to college? How am I going to feed our family. I went from like, nobody would know the kind of financial situation that I was in before. I mean, you'd look at me, I just look like a normal person. You didn't know that if I wanted to, I could have a matching pocketbook and shoes from Neiman Marcus or, you know, anything I wanted, but I still shop for Ross at Ross Dress for Less. I love that store. Okay. <laughs> but I went from not worrying or thinking about that at all to figuring out how can I feed our family five dollars for dinner you know we're going to go out to eat one night a month I was thinking well where can we go to eat that the food like we'll get a good portion like it's going to be worth it I never I never experienced that before 
it was really humbling. And the whole time, I just, I knew that it was happening for a reason. I was just trusting that the answers would come and that I was in this position because working through this, doing the next right thing day by day, I would be learning, I would be in a position to help more people because of the position that I was in. But not really knowing exactly why. It was very unclear. But I was at peace. So, um, I was starting to think about, like, should I get a real job? Like, I don't know, because I didn't think there would be another network marketing company out there that I would be aligned with. And uh, a guy who I mentored in another business, actually, I was on his chicken list. And he was afraid to call me. So he called his upline, Marcy Preble, another Marcy. And he said, I got, I got this, like, really amazing girl. Okay, like, you know, I want to call her, but I'm afraid. And she's like, I'll call her. So he calls me. This is what he says. He's like, Marcy, I met this other Marcy. She's so cool. She's an Aries, and she likes the Grateful Dead like you, and she spells her name like you. Can I give her your name? <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah. I mean, someone to go to dead shows with out in California. Okay. So I'm like, okay. So I get on the phone with this girl, Marcy, and she's a tote. Marcy Preble, if any of you know her from California. She's an elite pro seven. So we're talking, I'm like, she's totally groovy. This is awesome. I mean, we might be hooking up for a show, whatever. And we're talking. We're just developing this friendship. And then one day she says, um, I, I said to her, I go, well, how do you know Isaac, by the way? I don't, you never told me. She's like, oh, we're in business together. And I'm like, oh, because you have to know, Isaac was a jumper, okay? He was always telling me about this one, that one. I just never paid attention. Blinders on, okay? And so I said, oh. I said, well, what business is it? I mean, I know, I know a lot of these businesses. And she's like, oh, you know what? You just got to watch this ABC News report. I was like, what? Just tell me. Just, I mean, I, I'm pretty familiar. She's like, you know what? Let's just, let's just, if you want to know, like, I just want to share this ABC News prime, prime, prime investigative report with you. And, and then we could talk about it if you want. And, and so I was like, I'm not watching that ABC News report. I mean, she's just someone to tell me, fine, we'll just talk about the Grateful Dead and Aries. <laughs> so this went on for a while. And she didn't, she just, we kept developing the friendship. Then finally one day when I asked her again and she still was like, you gotta watch this ABC News primetime investigative report. I got off the phone and I run up to my husband who's a very successful entrepreneur, okay? This guy is, he's very sharp. I said, honey, come over here, turn your computer on. We're watching this ABC News primetime investigative report. He's like, why? I go, because I can't stand it anymore. There's something, there must be something really good on this thing. Okay, just let's just do it. Okay, it's a business opportunity, and I don't know, I'm sure it's not going to be anything special, but ABC News did something, it must be something. So we watched the news report, and my husband's comment after was, and by the way, I didn't really get it. I did not really get it. Thank God he was there. Okay, because he looked at me and he said, if this is true, I think you should check out this business because this is going to be huge. He said, but I don't care if you get into the business or not. I want that product in my body. And I thought, whoa. <laughs> I'm a network marketer. That tool was powerful. So what I want to say to you is if you're talking to a network marketer or someone about this business who, who knows something about it, what I was looking for was the system and the tools. When someone comes to me and they start blah, 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 just telling me all, I'm like, not interested. The minute they start talking, just using their mouth as the tool, talking, 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 I'm, I'm shut off. I'm not interested because that's not duplicatable, right? So because of that tool, I thought, whoa. That was powerful. Just all he did was watch it, and that's what he said. So I said, I better check this out. So I called Marcy Preble back. I said, wait, there might be something here. Tell me about this. She's like, let me get someone else on the phone. When can you talk? She schedules a call with someone else, and we start talking. And um, it's getting really intriguing. And this goes on. Every couple days, they're calling me. They're following up with me every couple days. I'm saying they. They is like four different people, 
four different people in the support team. They're all, I'm being introduced to them. They're all, I'm checking it out. And uh, they invited me to come to an elite academy. How many people here have ever been to a whole company event? Okay. I, how many people have been to more than one? Yeah, I can see, because once you go, you don't want to ever miss that, okay? I said no five times. Five times they invited me, five times. I had made a commitment to my son during the same period of time in Elite Academy, I was gonna pick him up at Sleepaway Camp. I had missed it the year before for a business commitment. I wasn't gonna miss it again. But when truth be told, when it came down, and it was in Missouri, I had to pick him up, I realized when I really got honest with myself, I could do it. I could go, but only for four hours. I'd have to fly to Florida, rent a car, stay in the hotel. I could go for four hours. I wasn't in, involved in the business, and I did it. I did it, and I gotta tell you, what I saw, it made my eyeballs pop out of my head, okay? That's what happened, eyeballs pop out of the head, at the head, where are they, where is that part? Um, okay. So, sorry, I just make sure I stay on track here. Here it is, eyeballs, underline, okay? I'm not kidding. All right. So what I saw when I got to Elite Academy, first of all, you guys, what you take from that is sometimes you got to really, you got to, you got to, it's not, it wasn't easy. Okay. I had to get really honest with myself. Did I really want to, was I really, really interested in this? I needed to see it with my own eyeballs. Okay. I know everyone on my team's like eyeballs, eyeballs. You always say eyeballs. Okay. So here's what I saw when I went. Do you want to hear what I, what, what my, from my perspective, what I saw in Life Vantage? I saw a very authentic, empowered community that was having fun. That turned me on. I love real people. Anybody here feel the same way? Okay. We are like real. Like what you get is what you get. This is Life Vantage. I think it's freaking awesome. I believe we can literally change the world by being ourselves and empowering other people to be themselves and having fun along the way. That's what we're doing. And then the mission, we're making people better. We're making the world a better place. That spoke to my heart. Third party science. I mean, I was working with nutritional products that were amazing, but I got to tell you, people would look at me when I'd start to talk about them like I had horns on my head. Like, like I was some kind of steer or something, you know, with like, you know, I'm like, no, I'm telling you, you know, this is, I am so relieved that I don't have to be a steer, okay? I can just steer people right over to pubmed.gov, right? Where they can, I mean, the fact that I could be involved in a business that had 16, at the time they didn't, but now 16 independent peer-reviewed published studies, Louisiana State University, University of Colorado. I mean, come on, this is crazy. This is a business? Um, I mean, and the product stories, one after the next. I mean, of course we can't say cures or heals or treats, but one after the next of the product stories were blowing my mind. And I'm thinking, these people didn't, they didn't all plan, there were 5,000 people there. They didn't all like just get all this planned and say all these things to me just to try to get me to join Life Vantage. You know, I'm like, is this like a setup? Are they all like, I was really like skeptical, okay? I love the mass appeal when it wasn't just like a niche little market that we were talking about. We're talking about everybody. If I believed in this, man, I was ready to tell everybody. And love the price points. I've been working with expensive products people that really like liked them, but they had to kind of figure out which one they could go with. With our products, it was like, there was no barrier to entry. People could take this and take it every single month. That's like creating a lot of residual income. And I saw at that Elite Academy, the recognition. It happened there on that Friday. I saw them call up the elite distributors of the company, and this is when the company was only three years in as network marketing. And the line of these leaders was wrapped around the convention center. They could only go up on the stage and just say their first and last name. 
It was like one after the next coming up there. Marcy Steiner. They wouldn't even tell me where they were from. And then they called up the eights, and then the eights got like, they said like their name and where they were from. And then the nines got like one minute to talk. And the tens got like five minutes to talk. And my jaw was on the floor. Because all I was thinking is, are you kidding me? This is working. Something's going on here that's really working. And, and then they asked in the audience, how many people had already had experience in network marketing? Only 50%. Well, I got excited about that because I wanted to be offering this opportunity to people where anybody could do this. How many people here can show an ABC News clip? Raise your hand. How exciting is that, okay? How many people can connect one person to another person? Raise your hand. Okay, then you can build this business. And that's like as simple as it is. It's just that simple. And I heard about a compensation plan that paid and drove the right behaviors beyond anything I ever had seen before. And I had, I had built them. I would built the compensation plan. I've, I've, I've torn them apart. I've never seen anything like the comp plan in LifeVantage. Absolutely ridiculous. So I left that elite academy, and I, I'm telling you, this, this was me walking out. I had to leave early because I had to get to the airport. I had an arch bag over my shoulder, and I'm walking out, and I took that name tag off, and I remember flipping it off my head and flinging it into that bag. I was pissed. I couldn't find anything wrong. <laughs> There was no gold teeth, okay? There was no like, you know, I don't wanna, you know, it wasn't sleazy, it was real, okay? I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but I was angry. I knew that I had to do this. I knew that this was the perfect storm and that's what I had to do for me to get to my yes. So, little reflection here. Are you at your yes? Scale of one to 10. Just write down a number. You don't have to show anybody. Write it down. When you get to that full on yes, it's a 10. If you're like one little pinky toe in the water, it's a one. Is it possible to swim in a pool with only your pinky toe in the water? <laughs> you guys, the wave is coming. Okay, it's not a question of if the wave is out there. The sw it's swelling, life vantage is swelling. The people that are all in the water, on the boards paddling right now, with the most partners paddling right now, do you get it? You've gotta be in your yes, you've gotta be on the board. Not just your toe in the water. How are you gonna go anywhere? People say, I don't know, I don't, we'll see if this thing works. Let me see, let me put my toe in. I'm gonna give it a try. How do you try? How do you try to build, like explain to me. I don't understand. Either you're in or you're out. Are you in? Yes. So I came home to my family and I said, you guys, listen, I found something that is blowing me away. You know, you guys know what I said, right? My eyeballs are popping out of my head, okay? My eyeballs are popping out of my head. I literally was like oozing every poor life vantage. When I would go to sleep, I, I tried not to do it, but even in my dreams, I was having life vantage dreams. And I said, you guys, things are gonna change because I'm gonna go for this. And what that means is that Mommy's not going to be at every dinner. I'm not going to, there are going to be a lot of things that I don't show up for now because I'm saying yes to this, not for the next three months, but for the next three to five years with my head down in the water paddling like never freaking before. Now, what did that look like? I mean, I had to, re I had to let go of things. I really had to let go. I had to reshift my priorities. I, I, I'm an artist. I haven't painted in almost three years. I love it. I mean, but you know what? I'm gonna have plenty of time to do that. 
I'll have plenty of time with beautiful inspiration all around me, painting beautiful masterpieces of whatever's been. There's a moment of time. We're all, everybody in this room is blessed. We are all, if you believe it, if it's right for you, there's a moment. This doesn't happen. I knew this was never going to happen again. We are the lucky ones. Doesn't mean that there's not going to be an opportunity for people five years from now, ten years from now. Of course, we'll, we'll continue to create mo like smaller momentum waves by opening up new countries, by having new products. But you know what? This is huge. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. So I just want you to know your life is an absolute reflection of what you are saying yes to in every area of your life, in your relationships, with your spouse, with your kids, with your work, whatever it is. So be mindful. When you look at your life, just know what I am saying yes to. And know that because you're human, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can choose what you want for your life because you make a decision about what you're going to do in every given moment. So when, when I got started, what did it look like for me? Total lockdown mode. I was in lockdown. I went into the guest bedroom and I, I seriously, I sat on the bed. I had my charger, I had my phone, I had my list. I had my blueprint, okay? Like, this is not my original blueprint. It's in a museum, okay? My original blueprint. <laughs> you would not believe what it looks like. It's like all tattered, the front copy. Who's seen my original blueprint? It's, it's so scary. Everywhere I went, I had the blueprint. But I had it, I mean, it was all there. And I said, this is it. This is it. I'm going for it. And I didn't eat. I, didn't, I smelled, okay? I'm telling you, I hardly got in the shower. They told me I needed to do at least 15 presentations a month. No. That's two to three a week. I had set some goals. When you get started, you guys set goals. Know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, if you... We, okay, listen. Here's the thing. When you get started, you're either... Are you joining a club? Or are you starting to build a business? You have to make that determination. If you're joining a club, oh yeah, I, I'm in that. I joined that club, like a book club, Life Vantage, the Life Vantage Club, okay? If that's what you're doing, that's cool. It's an expensive club, okay? Because it can get expensive going to the events. But if you're going to build a business, then have that mindset, take the time. And you know what? We can start over at any point. Right now, today, you can sit there and go, you know what? I'm in. I'm in today. I'm going to start over. And envision the business that you're going to build. Put on, picture yourself in the, in the office. It's, I don't know what, what yours looks like, but, you know, I was in the big, tall office. The furniture was gorgeous. Everything was in place. Had the name, the top of the company, beautiful lights. There I sat in the corner office looking out over Bethesda. But the executive offices were all empty. So I had to think about where did I want to go with my business and who did I want sitting in those executive offices, okay? It's really important. I knew what my goals were. I wanted to, when I'm, you're, you're building that foundation, right, when you start that building. For me, my goal was 10 business partners, 10 business partners in 30 days. I wanted to get, I didn't want to be lopsided, so I just said, go for 10. And when you have 10, maybe two or three of those 10 are going to really run with you, right? So that's what I did, and that's what, exactly what happened. And I, I was told, commit to the master track. You guys heard of the master track? Okay. Just a few people. Let me tell you what the master track is. This is what I did. I just said, I had seen those master pro tens like Jill Campbell. I said, what in the world is the difference between them and me? I'm asking you guys, what is the difference between you and a master pro ten? There is no difference. We're all the same. We all are the same. We can all do the same things. 
I said, so if I want what they have, if I want to be where they are, all I have to do is do what they do and think like they think, I'm going to do that. So here, they said, listen to pro audio series. Pro audio series, you wanted to be, a, if you, anybody here a golfer? Okay, we have a few golfers. What would it be like to be learning from Tiger Woods? Would you want to learn from Tiger Woods or Uncle Joe? When you listen to pro audio series, you are plugging in the top leaders of the company sharing their wisdom and their guidance with you. I committed to that. I, in fact, when I got started, the person who enrolled me, who helped me go in the system, said, you don't need that. It's an extra $3.18 a week. You know, you don't, you don't really need that. And I later found out what it was, and I was like, oh my gosh. Well, he just didn't know. He was new, too. He didn't know. But I was like, oh, this is amazing. For $12 a month when my business is going to pay for it, I'm not going to miss that. I mean, that keeps me going. Attend events, all company events. That's the second part of the master track. Never, never miss an all company event. I've never missed one. And I gotta tell you, I have sacrificed, there have been some really, really hard ones. Really, really hard. But I was like, do I want this? Yes, I want this. Then I'm going to choose to be at every company sponsored event because that's part of the master track. The last thing is exposures, 15 a month. 15 a month is two to three a week. That wasn't going to cut it. I had to do two to three a day. So every day I had to focus on what I can control, which is picking up the phone and making the invite so that I had at least two to three exposures every single day. Okay? No excuses. That's what I did. That's why I didn't eat. It, if I, I just need to pick up and keep inviting, keep inviting, keep inviting till I get somebody to say yes. They wanted to take a look at doing the business with me and get on the phone with one of my business partners to get an overview. The rate of exposure equals the rate of success. And success equals dollars and lives changed. Lives transformed. That was what was, that's what I was thinking of. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to change more lives. We're doing it together. How do we make money? We make money by expanding and retaining the customer and distributor base in LifeVantage. So how is that going to happen? I know it's, it's kind of scary. It's going to happen from picking up the phone. And if you build your business right, I'm telling you, your business is going to last forever. So really, I want you to be thinking about duplication as you take your business to the next level. That is really the business that we're in. We're not in a sales business. We're in the business of duplication. You're going to create a duplication machine. That's what you're going to do. You want to do and say what hundreds and thousands of other people can and will do and say. You might want to write that down. Do and say what hundreds and thousands of others can and will do and say. It's amazing. You will find that whatever you do, your team is going to do. So just take a look at yourself. And, and say, is what I'm doing going to lead my team down the path of success? And if you need to make an adjustment, just make an adjustment. I have to do it all the time. But here's the, the point of this is leverage, you guys. This is an amazing business. Does anybody want to have another job? Raise your hand if you want a job. Amazing. Nobody here is signing up for a job. <laughs> well, if you want a job, then don't duplicate. Do everything on your own. You can easily get to pro one, two, three. That's, that's all basically very easy because you're out there doing it yourself. But if you're going to build a team, that's how you're going to get to four, five, six, all the way up. It's leverage. It's all about presentations. So if I'm doing 15 presentations a month myself, that's 15 people that I'm sifting and sorting with. But if those 15 people, I'm sorry, let's say I go out and enroll five people. And those five people do 15 presentations. How many presentations is that? It's like 75. It's a lot more people in front of the opportunity, right? And then if those five people go and enroll five more people, that's 25 people. And if those 25 people 
commit to 15 presentations a month, you're almost at 400 presentations. So it's not, when you're, when, you're, when you're building your business, it's not just about what you do, it's about what you do and what you teach other people to do. I hope that makes sense. So I wanna give you some power tools to build your business. First of all, absolutely use your team. Reach up, keep reaching up, keep reaching up to do training with your support team. I don't like to call it upline because it sounds like you can't, you're kind of stuck like in a traditional corporate sense. It's not like that, okay? You're, you're just getting the support from up. In fact, if, if you're, for me, let me speak for myself. I know who I'm going to spend my time with because that I see who is following the master track, doing all those things I just talked about, and who is in action. That's how I'm gonna know. So your power tool is your team reach up for anything and everything. If somebody's in action, I don't care if they're calling me five times a day at the beginning. Let's get you trained, Let's, I'm gonna work with you until we get you to the point where you're doing it and teaching other people to do it and we're, we're having leaders go down at least three levels. That's what I'm focused on. Another power tool, power tool number two, the telephone. Telephone, what do you use the telephone for? Well, in the Northeast, you guys, it's crazy. Did anyone run into traffic today? Oh my gosh, I hear leaders in Life Vantage going, you gotta build your business face to face. And I'm going, just, you know, I have to sift and sort on the phone, okay? If I was to do every exposure face to face over here to sift and sort, it would not be that, are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay, the telephone is your friend, okay? Do you have to use it? No, you can do whatever you want. It's your business. But the telephone is my friend. It's a power tool. I use it to sift and sort. And I want you guys to know that I am not in the business of selling. We are not in the business of selling. We are in the business of attraction, not promotion. I'm not calling people up and promoting the business. No. When you start, before you even start to pick up that phone, be mindful of what it is you're looking for. Who are your perfect business partners that you want to work with? Write down, make a list of the qualities, characteristics, and attributes of your perfect business partner, of your perfect customers. Because how are you gonna sift and sort and recognize them if you don't even know what you're looking at? Does that make sense? Know what you're looking for. Seth's gonna talk about that a little bit more, I hope. Yeah. All right. So when I think about sifting and sorting, I think about oysters, shucking oysters. That's the reason why I brought, wore these pearls today, okay? If I gave you a bushel of oysters and I said, in, these, in this bushel, there are three oysters with pearls in them, and each pearl is going to be worth multi-millions of dollars to you. Are you gonna pick up each oyster and tell me a long story about the history of that oyster and where you found it and where it worked and who its parents were and all that kind of stuff? No, you're just gonna freaking shuck the oyster and see, like pearl or no pearl, pearl or no pearl, right? We're looking for the pearls. Just shuck the oysters, pick up the telephone. We're looking to see who is it now o'clock. We're shucking. Carrie's, uh, Carrie Dickey always talks about the blue M&Ms. I like that because it sets the realistic expectations for people in terms of how many people are you gonna sift and sort through. A typical bag of M&Ms has about 250 M&Ms and they're all different colors. She says we're looking for the blue ones, right? Well, can you take a red one and lick it and turn it into blue? No. We're just looking for the blue. There's nothing wrong with the red or the green or the purple or the black. They just go in this pile. We're looking for about 25 blue ones. That, if you talk to elite distributors, they're gonna say it's about, on average, about 25 distributors you'll enroll. Some are gonna do it, some aren't gonna do it, okay? And you, could, you guys, don't get your feelings hurt. Don't take things personally as you're sifting and sorting. Think about the flight attendant, okay? You guys know about the flight attendant? Yeah, you're a flight attendant? Okay, so you're, you're a flight attendant. You're, let's just say it's a short flight and you've got coffee and water on your tray and you're going down, right? You're going down the aisle and say, sir, would you like some coffee? 
Yes. Sir, would you like some? Yes. Ma'am? Yes. Would you, what about you, um, sir? Would you like some? No. <laughs> I'm going back to the cockpit. This is, I quit. This is hard. You didn't want my coffee. You guys, big deal. So what? Next, right? We're sifting and we're sorting. Some will, some won't. So what next? Okay, now what else with the telephone? How? I told you about what we use the telephone for. How do we do it? We do it with the ABC system. This is a small little whiteboard, but it's on page 23, I think, in your blueprint. A and the B and the C, where the A is, is the expert, your advisor. The B is the bridge. That's the person who's doing the inviting that is going to build up the advisor. And then the C is the client, right, or the prospect. When you're gonna do a three-way call, just know that your client, your prospect has no idea who this advisor is. They don't know him from Adam. It is your job to, because your, your client, your prospect, they really trust you. You've already got a relationship with your friend, right? But they don't really have any respect for this stranger here. We have got to make that, allow that respect to happen by using the tool of edification. Edification means to build up, to say something good about something. We can use edification in a lot of different areas in our business, not just in edifying somebody. We can also edify the industry, right? We can edify the company, LifeVantage. We can edify the opportunity. Oh my gosh, I've, I've found something. This is an this is an incredible opportunity. I'm really, really excited about it, okay? I'm saying something positive about the opportunity. We can say, say something positive about the culture. We can say something, edify particular people. We can edify teams of people. What happens when that happens is there's a respect that occurs when you edify, when you build up. This is a, I don't wanna downplay this, this is an absolute power tool to building your business. And you want to be very mindful as a leader about who you edify, what you edify, and how you edify. It needs to be authentic. I'll tell you, I, I've been in situations where I've been put on a call, I'm a three-way call, and the person doesn't even know that we're talking about the business. They don't even know. They, somebody just said, uh, do you have five minutes to watch a video? And then the person gets on the phone with me, and then they're like, oh, Marcy, um, this is my friend Joe. Oh, hi, Joe. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I have no clue. So I'm going to say two things. I'm going to teach you how to make an introduction, first of all. But second of all, I want to say to you, please be the kind of life vantage leader that's easy to edify. So uncomfortable when I have to, I'm put in a position where I, I want to edify the bridge, I want to build, because rule of thumb network marketing, we can't edify ourselves. If you haven't figured that out, okay? We cannot, it's really distasteful. What if I got up on stage and I go, you might want to listen to me, because I've been in the industry a long time, got my Jeep, I, you know, I know what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> Please, that's like so gross. <laughs> but if somebody else says it about me, it's okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so we cannot edify ourselves. It's really distasteful. We just have to be the kind of leader that others can and will edify. That's just how it works in this industry. It's just how, it's just how it flows. So here's what you wanna do. When you're on the phone call, you wanna start by introducing your expert to your prospect, to your client, the C. And you wanna, you wanna tell the expert four things. Number one, their name. Number two, where they live. Like what part of the country or which country? Because that's gonna give the, the expert some kind of information. Maybe they're gonna know about an event that's happening in that area or a leader that's, that's building there or someone else on your team that's there. And then you're gonna tell them the third thing, how you know this person. And then the fourth thing you're gonna tell them is why you chose to show this opportunity, share this opportunity with them. Those are the four things. So it's, uh, you know, here is my friend, Meryl. Meryl lives in Philadelphia. We met 
um, at a bus stop years ago, and she was, I, I just wanted to share this opportunity because Meryl is an entrepreneur, and I'm not going to tell you the real deal about Meryl because you're going to hear from her soon, but she is, Meryl Addis is an amazing, absolutely an amazing woman. And, and so that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to tell my, and now how do you think Meryl would be feeling at that moment? Pretty good, right? She's going to be feeling like, oh, maybe I have something of potential value to bring to the table here, right? Well, then I'm going to establish my A as the expert. And I'm going to say, so friend, Meryl, I want to introduce you to my business partner, Joey. Joey is, lives in Maryland. Um, he is one of the strongest mentors I have in building this business. He is an amazing guy. His background is in uh, martial arts. He's a father of two, and he is a, a trainer for many people in our business. He, this guy is just amazing. He knows, he's got a beautiful heart, and he's all about making a difference in the world. I would kind of pick what I want to say about my expert based on who I'm talking to. But one thing I will say to you, in our group, what we do um, as a best practice, every person who comes into our organization, they are meeting at least six people. Not just getting names and numbers, but everybody gets at least six introductions to people in their support team that they can use as advisors to build their business. Because without support, you're not going anywhere. Power tool number three, tenacity. You got to be disciplined, you guys. Life gets in the way. Things happen. I mean, just walking in here today, I saw so many people that I love and even new people that I didn't even know. And they said, this was a tough week. This was a tough one. This is life, you guys. It's life. Life is going to happen. I call it the universal prove it principle. I'm going to prove it to the universe that I ch what I'm choosing. I'm choosing to come back and stay true to my dreams, true to my commitment to show up for myself, to show up for my family. So that's why I call it the universal prove it principle. Well, the universe is just kind of giving me a little test. And I have to, I have to, the people who make it, I'm sure I'm not a pro 10 yet, okay, uh, but I really have a lot of respect for Jill Campbell and all the other master pro 10s because it's not just going through the, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven being the middle one, I'm going to talk about that in a second. It's managing in between the head. That's the toughest part. The fears, the self-doubts, the self-limiting beliefs that come up, it's all make-believe, it's all fear, and fear is negative imagination. So it happens to be something that we can have full control over. We don't always have control over all of our emotions. There's a few that we do. One is guilt and the other is fear. We can literally take something we're afraid of and turn it into, instead of negative imagination, positive imagination, and then get into creative mode and focus on what we want and choose to go in a different direction with different actions. I mean, you gotta hold on to your dreams. You gotta fight like a pit bull. Really, fight for that. There are times when you're picking up that phone and you're making those calls, it burns. It burns. It's like, well, this is not easy sometimes, depending on what you want. You gotta want it bad. You've got to have that burning desire. So keep, keep keeping on, okay, that tenacity. The fourth power tool I'm going to tell you about is a ladder. It's not really a power tool. It's a ladder. It's the accountability ladder. And accountability is the center of the proven plan. If you look in the middle, it's step seven. It's the center of everything. Wherever you are in your life, just be true with yourself. Like I got real with myself. Get real with yourself. This is, this is it. This is the way it is. Acknowledge reality. It's accountable. Own it. Own it. I own this. Step up and be the leader that you would want to follow. Just be it. Just be it. If you don't feel like the leader, act as if you are that leader. Look at people that are. Be yourself, your authentic self, but act as if until you grow into that skin. We are literally in Life Vantage looking for leaders. We are looking for a thousand people 
to go to the elite ranks right now. We're looking for 100 people right now to go to Master Pro 10. How many of you? Is it you? Raise your hand if it's you. Okay, I want, I want you guys to know, we will know that you are the leader, not by what you say, by what you do. And with that, I'm going to close it up. I know that you all are Master Pro 10s. I love you all. I feel very blessed to be here with, with all of you today. Thank you for showing up because you being in the seats, you being part of this community, fills me. It give, you give me hope. You give me belief. Thank you.